Hi, and welcome to the Focus on Eye Health Expert Series. I'm Jeff Todd, President and CEO at Prevent Blindness. Today, we're going to talk about inherited retinal disorders, along with children's vision issues, with Dr. Alina Dumitrescu, or Dr. D, Cl Clinical Associate Professor of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences at the University of Iowa. Very happy to be here today. Nice to see you, Jeff. You too. Um, well, thanks for joining us. Um, could you start out by telling us a little bit more about you and your area of expertise? Sure. So I am a double fellowship trained in pediatric ophthalmology and pediatric inherited eye disorders. Um, and I am at the University of Iowa now, and I have a ded dedicated pediatric ophthalmology clinic, but also a dedicated pediatric inherited eye disorder clinic. And that means I have the time and, and the equipment and, and everything to actually take care of the pediatric patients with inherited eye disorders. And currently I serve as a chair of the uh, Pediatric Inherited Eye Disorder Committee of APOS. Okay, wonderful. Well, thanks again. And I'm excited to hear your, your strong interest in pediatric vision. This is the year of children's vision at Prevent Blindness. And so I want to dig into that a bit later as well. But can we start out by um, talking a little bit about inherited retinal diseases or IRDs? What, what does that mean? What are they? Inherited retinal disorders are obviously disorders of the retina, but they are more than that. They are progressive, sometimes blinding disorders that can be inherited in multiple generations or multiple siblings. And historically, they have been considered and associated with blindness and nothing we can do about it. But in the last 20 years, and particularly in the last 10 years, they have come to light as possibilities for treatment, possibilities for changing people's life. So. Again, they are serious diseases um, that are heritable and they affect multiple parts of the retina. And I want to make a little commentary here. We are going to focus on inherited retinal disorders, but inherited eye disorders in general, it's a bigger topic and includes other parts of the eye. Oh, that, yeah, that's very, very good to point out. Thank you. Um, and you know, I, I mean, I, I know there are, there are different types of IRDs. Could you talk a little bit about um, kind of the different different types of that exist? I think we can you know classify them in many ways, but for parents and for patients, the most important part is based on when they start. They are very early onset childhood retinal dystrophies that um, are devastating for vision and start with very poor vision and, and various eye signs. Um, there are also later onset retinal dystrophies where kids have pretty normal or close to normal vision up until school age or teenage year or later on. And then they start developing signs of progression, progressive vision loss. Um, there are um, inherited eye disorders that affect more the cones or more the rods, more the vision in the dark or vision in bright light. Um, there are inherited eye disorders that are unfortunately associated with other systemic signs like hearing loss or uh, developmental delays or seizures or whatnot. Um, so many types and, and each of them has a little quirk with it, if you want, and, and a little something special. Are there um, particular populations or groups, groups of people that are at a higher risk um, for IRDs? Yes and no. Um, anybody, unfortunately, can have an IRD. However, if there is a family history of, of such conditions, the risk is a bit higher. And with the help of a genetic counselor and a professional, we can evaluate the risk of that disease. And without singling out any population or anything, um, the populations that tend to stay closer together and have some degree of consanguinity, intentional or not, are a little bit of higher risk of having particularly recessive inherited eye disorders. Okay, okay. Well, well, one of the reasons that Prevent Blindness has, has become more interested in IRDs over, over the last several years is, 
is luckily there's a lot of, of really important research going on in this area. Can you talk a little bit about some of the research that's currently taking place um, over the last few years and into the future? Well, you'll have to stop me at one point because <laughs> this is the most exciting part um, of, of, of doing this job. Um, five years ago, for the first time ever in history, there was a drug that was FDA approved for treating heritable blindness. Um, and it's specifically uh, treating labor congenital amaurosis due to RP65 mutations. And um, that has been such an important step. That has been such a, um, a great achievement and has given hope to so many and has allowed the development and the interest around this uh, treatment. And today on clinicaltrial.gov, there are 72 clinical trials of um, enrolling pediatric patients for various eye disorders. Not all of them are treatment trials because we learned that we have to define the endpoints for treatment. We have to know the natural history of various diseases in order to be able to treat it. But some of them are treatment trials. And there are trials for retinitis pigmentosa. There are trials for Usher syndrome. There are trials for Stargard disease, uh, achromatopsia, choroideremia. Majority of big groups of disorders have at least an attempt or at least a trial that is going on for treatment, many different approaches, um, gene replacement therapy, antisense oligonucleotides, stem cells, nanoparticles, medicine to slow the progression of the disease. I'm really hopeful, CRISPR, I, I'm really hopeful that between all this, there'll be much more treatments available in the perhaps not to distant future. That's so exciting to hear. I mean, as you said, it's just so hopeful. It, it, um, it's wonderful here and, and to hear um, your passion around that. Um, let's talk a little bit about genetic testing. What is it and what are some of the benefits of having genetic testing done? So we are talking a bit earlier about treatment. No treatment will be possible unless we have a diagnosis. So, we need genetic, treat, uh, genetic testing for diagnosis, at least for that. But there are many, many types of genetic testing. It's kind of an umbrella term for, for many things. And it's a, it's a difficult um, test to do and has a lot of, of specific issues with ordering and interpreting the test. So, it can be done, absolutely, yes. It should be done because patients deserve to know what diagnosis they have. They need to know what's the risk for other siblings, what's the risk for other kids that are not born yet, what's the risk for other members of the family, what's the risk for their own children when they will have some. And again, without a diagnosis, we cannot have a treatment. But uh, genetic testing has to be done with knowledge about what tests are we ordering? What does it mean if it's positive? What does it mean if it's negative? What are we testing for? What are we leaving out? And, and we have to be very careful when we interpret it to make sure it matches the actual disease and not give people erroneous diagnosis. Got it, thank you. Um, well, let's talk a little bit about children, children and vision health. Um, as I mentioned, this is the year of children's vision at Prevent Blindness. Can you share why it's so important for children to have access to eye care um, throughout their developmental years? Unfortunately, we know too many don't, and we're working on that. But why is that important? So as I said, besides the inherited eye disorders, I'm a pediatric ophthalmologist, so I, I treat children with any disorders. And it's sad that in year 2022, there are still children going blind from mostly preventable and treatable disorders. Um, and early access, early diagnosis, and very simple treatments like glasses or patching or sometimes surgery 
can save vision for the rest of their life for these children. So amblyopia is the number one cause of vision loss in at least one eye in children. And, and it will be permanent once they reach a certain age and could be prevented and could be treated if it's diagnosed early enough. Um, strabismus, it's another cause of vision loss. Again, it's a visible physical disability, affects people for the rest of their life, can be diagnosed and treated earlier. Um, congenital glaucoma, again, treatable with surgeries and, and drugs, needs to be screened for until it's too late or vision is lost. And, and to answer your question, why is it important to be done earlier? Because the critical time for visual development is in the first eight to 10 years of life, and specifically in the first two years of life. Certain connections between the eye and the brain, certain visual pathways, develop only in that time. If the children does not have it, they will never be recovered. So even if we diagnose them as a teenager, it's way too late to do anything. Yeah, and even beyond those conditions you mentioned, amblyopia, strabismus, others, just the, the simple need for children to have glasses in order to enter school and see if, if they don't have access to just simple um, glasses, then they're gonna be set behind developmentally. I absolutely agree. And, um, you know, they learn how to see, they learn how to use their visual information. And, and for some people, it's really hard to even get used with the glasses afterwards because they're so sad and struggling. And, um, you know, for, for so many families, just checking, it's not an option. It has to be a concerted effort for screening and a sustained effort to access for the to the glasses and sometimes contact lenses sometimes patches i mean very simple rather not expensive things but they can be unaffordable for some families for too many families yep absolutely um well we know that many children don't necessarily know that they have a vision problem especially younger children because they really you know think that everyone else is seeing the world in the same way that they see how could a, what things should a parent or caregiver look out for um, as it relates to their children's vision? It's actually very common for children not to know that, that what they see is not normal. Um, so but first of all, vision screening that does not involve children participation. It, it's the most efficient method to identify either amblyopia or vision problem or the risk factors for them. But as a parent or caregiver or as a provider, besides obvious strabismus or struggling or closing one eye or getting closer to objects to see them, there are a couple of other signs that could be either subtle or overlooked, especially for inherited eye disorders. Congenital nystagmus or infantile nystagmus syndrome more than half of the times is associated with an underlying inherited eye disorder. And it should be investigated and, and deserves a workup. Extreme light sensitivity could be a sign of albinism or achromatopsia or a corneal dystrophy or a cause, an ocular cause of vision loss. Night vision problems. Kids that are extremely afraid in the dark, they get lost in the dark, nectalopia could be a sign of an inherited eye problem. Extreme myopia, very high myopic glasses at very early age are often associated with an underlying con condition. Um, other things um, to look for, the kids with uh, poor color vision or poor color discrimination, again, can be a sign of achromatopsia or other diseases. And school age children that cannot be corrected to 2020 vision. It's never a normal thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I know you specialize among many things, it sounds like, in, in pediatric oculogenetics. Can you explain what that is? 
what that means really is that I have a dedicated clinic for uh, inherited eye disorders and I have the time and the equipment to deal with it. I have an electrophysiology lab that can do electrophysiology testing like ERG or VP or night dark adaptation almost in any child awake without sedation. I have a genetic counselor that works with me and it's available right then to talk with the parents, to do a pedigree, to send the genetic testing. I have perimetrist and other very specialized trained um, uh, practitioners to help me. So, and again, because it's dedicated to that, I actually have the time to spend hours with those patients and their families. Um, and and to, to get a very good phenotypic description of their disease. So when we order a genetic testing or another testing, um, it's a very targeted test. And, and we know from the get-go what we are looking for. Well, that, that's so great to hear. I know that this country is woefully under um, pediatric ophthalmologists in general are very rare in this country, and we need more of you. Um, so thanks for all, for all the work you do, and certainly for the specialization. Before we wrap up today, is there anything else that you'd like our audience to know about inherited, inherited retinal disorders or children's eye health in general? I, I want them to, to hear that, that there is hope and that there are treatments on the way and that they should be asking their providers, could this be inherited? Could my next child have it? Could my other child have it? Uh, could this be progressive? And, and try to find answers because they matter. Thank you. And, and for anyone interested in finding out more about children's vision, IRDs, or prevent blindness in general, you can visit our website at preventblindness.org. Thank you, Dr. D. Thank you for having me.